Think your love life's all hearts and flowers? Wake up. If you're hearing manipulative garbage from your partner, it's not romance. It's a red alert. Let's tear down these lies with the truth, one painful piece at a time. When your partner says, I just want us to spend more time together, it can sound sweet at first, right? But there's a thin line between love and control. And when more time starts to mean no time for anyone else, that's when you've got a problem. Isolation doesn't happen overnight. It starts small. Maybe they sulk every time you make plans with others, or they badmouth your friends and family. They might sugarcoat it as being protective or just missing you too much, but what's really happening? They're slowly but surely cutting you off from your support network, and here's why that's dangerous. Without a solid support system, you become more dependent on them. It's a classic manipulation tactic. The less feedback you get from others, the easier it is to twist your reality. This isn't just about being possessive. It's about power and control. Recognize these signs. If so, it's time for a serious chat. Communication is key. Address your concerns. If they love you, they'll understand. If they react badly... Well, that's another huge red flag. I hate it when you... Let's cut through the nonsense, shall we? This isn't about them hating that tiny, insignificant thing you do. No, this is about control, about changing who you are. And trust me, it's a slippery slope. Here's the drill. I hate it when you wear that. I hate it when you hang out with them. I hate it when you spend time on your hobbies. Sounds familiar? It starts with small complaints. But what they're really doing is chipping away at your identity, piece by piece. Oh, and they'll make you think they're doing you a favor, that they're helping you be a better person. Please give me a break. Since when did emotional blackmail become a self-improvement plan? Here's the harsh truth. They don't hate your clothes, your friends, or your hobbies. They hate that you have an identity outside of them. They need to feel important and how better than to make you think you're flawed without their constant corrections. If your partner can't handle you being yourself, then maybe they can't handle being in a relationship. Real love doesn't nitpick you to death. Real love celebrates you, not constantly criticizes you. Think about it. Are you changing because you want to, or because they've convinced you that you're not good enough as you are? If it's the latter, it's time to rethink not just your wardrobe or your friends list, but your entire relationship. Stop shrinking to fit someone's tiny, distorted version of you. Expand. Grow. Be unapologetically you. And if they can't handle that, their loss, not yours. Show them the door and lock it behind them. Now, onto a favorite tactic of the emotionally manipulative. You're overacting. It's not that big a deal. Oh, isn't this just a classic? The art of making you question your own feelings, your own sanity even. It's called gaslighting, my friends, and it's as toxic as it gets. Picture this. You're hurt or upset about something genuinely troubling. Maybe they forgot your birthday, flirted with someone right in front of you, or made a cruel joke at your expense. But instead of apologizing, what do you get? Wow, relax, you're so sensitive. Or even better, I was just joking, can't you take a joke? Really? Because twisting the knife and then calling it a joke isn't funny. It's cowardly. And telling you that you're too sensitive... That's just a way to belittle your feelings, to make you the problem instead of addressing the real issue. Let's break it down. Why do they do it? Simple. If they can make you mistrust your own emotions, you become easier to control. You start relying on their version of reality, which, surprise, surprise, always casts them in a better light. So, what should you do when you hear this nonsense? First, trust your gut. Your feelings are valid. Don't let anyone, especially not someone who's supposed to love you, tell you otherwise. Second, call them out. A real partner discusses problems. They don't dismiss them. And if they can't handle a simple thing like respecting your feelings, then it's high time to show them what they're dismissing. The door, out with the gas lighters, and in with someone who actually understands what mutual respect means.
Next on our hit list of relationship nightmares, if you loved me, you would... Oh, strap in. This one's a manipulator's delight. It's the guilt trip to end all guilt trips, and it's about as toxic as they come. Ever heard this gem before? It starts off sounding like a plea for understanding, but don't be fooled. It's a manipulation tactic at its finest. They're not asking for love. They're demanding compliance and dressing it up as a test of your affection. And it's downright dirty. If you loved me, you would skip hanging out with your friends. If you loved me, you wouldn't need privacy on your phone. Let me translate that for you. If you could just do everything I want, that would prove you love me. Ridiculous, right? Since when did love become about proving yourself through obedience? Here's the truth. Love is not about passing tests. It's not about sacrificing your needs, your friends, or your privacy to prove a point. Love is about respect, trust, and support. It's about being free to be yourself and being loved for it, not for how well you follow commands. So what do you do when someone tries this emotional blackmail on you? You call it out, you set boundaries, and you remind them that real love doesn't keep score. It doesn't manipulate, it supports, it respects, it cherishes. It does not reduce you to a servant of someone else's whims. Are you in a relationship or a dictatorship? Ask yourself that. And if it's starting to feel more like the latter, maybe it's time to reconsider who you're sharing your heart with, because guess what? You deserve someone who loves you for you, not for what you can do for them. Ready for the next toxic trick up the manipulator's sleeve? Here it is. I'm just worried about you. Sounds caring, right? Wrong. It's often just a cover for controlling behavior. This isn't about them caring. It's about controlling. And the difference? It's massive. Here's how it plays out. They question your choices under the guise of worrying for your safety. Why do you need to go out so late? Why do you need to talk to that person? Slowly, what seems like concern is actually a leash tightening around your freedom, your decisions, your life. Oh, I just want to make sure you're safe. Sure, and I just want to breathe without asking for permission. See how ridiculous that sounds? True concern is supportive not suffocating. It's about being there when you need help, not policing your every move. There's a fine line between caring and controlling, and once someone starts crossing it under the banner of worry, it's time to pause and evaluate. Don't get me wrong, it's normal for partners to worry about each other, but there's a world of difference between caring communication and invasive questioning. If every show of concern comes with an interrogation, it's not worry, it's a warning. Ask yourself this, are they treating you like an adult with your own judgment or like a child who can't be trusted? Are you a partner or a project? Love respects autonomy. It doesn't smother it under the pretense of protection. All right, let's roll right into another big red flag that might be flying right under your radar. You owe me. This isn't about keeping a healthy balance in your relationship. It's about keeping score. And let me tell you, that's a game you can never win. Ever done something nice just to have it thrown back in your face later? Remember that time I did this for you? Now you owe me. It turns relationships into transactions. And who wants to be in love with an accountant tallying every gesture? It starts innocently enough. Maybe they do you a favor and you feel grateful. But then the balance shifts. Suddenly, you find yourself in a debt you didn't sign up for, chained to a ledger of favors and supposed obligations. Oh, you didn't forget that time I picked up the tab, did you? Because now it's your turn to give up something for me. It's manipulative. It's petty. And frankly, it's exhausting. Here's the deal. Real love doesn't keep a ledger. It's generous, it's selfless, and it certainly doesn't come with strings attached. If someone loves you, they give because they want to make you happy, not because they expect payback. If you're feeling more like an investment than a partner, it's time to rethink your relationship. No one should use affection as currency, and if they do, show them that your love isn't for sale. 
It's time to break free from the market of manipulation. Coming up, we're tackling a classic manipulation move that often gets overlooked. No one else will ever love you. It's cruel, it's cutting, and it's a blatant lie designed to trap you in a cycle of doubt and dependency. This is not just a red flag. It's a massive, flashing neon sign of emotional abuse. When someone tells you that no one else will love you, what they're really saying is, I want to be your only option. It's a strategy to make you feel so low, so undeserving of affection, that you won't dare to think you could do better. But here's the truth. They're scared. Scared that you'll realize your own worth and that you'll see through their manipulative facade. They're terrified of you discovering that you can find not just better, but the best for yourself. Let me be clear. This isn't love. It's a prison of self-doubt built with bricks of insecurity and mortared with lies. Real love builds you up. It doesn't tear you down. Real love makes you feel cherished, not chained. So the next time someone tries to sell you this pathetic line, throw it right back at them. Tell them, not only will someone else love me, but they will love me better, more respectfully, and more truly than you ever could. Because guess what? You are worth loving, not for what you can provide, not for what you sacrifice, but for who you are. Full stop. Don't let anyone convince you otherwise. Break free from these chains of doubt. It's time to embrace the love you truly deserve, not the scraps someone else tells you are your only meal. Next up, we're exposing another destructive lie that too many hear in their relationships. You're lucky I'm with you. Can you believe that? It's not just arrogant, it's manipulative. It's designed to make you feel grateful for crumbs when you deserve the whole banquet. This phrase is a classic manipulation tool. It suggests that you're somehow unworthy, that you should feel lucky they're stooping to be with you. It's about power. They're trying to plant a seed of gratitude for their mere presence in your life, as if they're doing you a favor by simply existing by your side. Let's break this down. What's really happening here? This isn't love or even respect. It's a psychological game designed to keep you under their thumb. By making you feel less than, they boost their own ego and keep you exactly where they want you, grateful and subservient. Think about it. In a healthy relationship, both partners feel lucky to have each other. It's a mutual admiration club, not a one-sided charity event. Love is about balance, respect and mutual appreciation, not gratitude for being chosen. If anyone ever tells you you're lucky to be with them, here's a tip. Tell them luck has nothing to do with it. Relationships are about choice, and guess what? You can choose someone who knows your worth instead of questioning it. Don't settle for someone who makes you feel like you won the consolation prize. You are the grand prize, and don't you forget it. Surround yourself with people who see your value and uplift you. That's not luck. That's what you rightly deserve. All right, moving swiftly on to a classic disguise for control. I need to know where you are at all times. Listen, when your partner demands constant updates on your whereabouts, it's not out of love. It's surveillance. And last time I checked, love isn't a security program. Here's the lowdown. When they want a GPS update on you 24-7, it's not because they care about your safety. It's because they want control over your movements. It's about ownership, not partnership. It's a way to keep you within an invisible fence they've set up around your life. Imagine this. Every time you step out, there's a barrage of texts. Where are you? Who are you with? When will you be home? Sounds suffocating. That's because it is. This isn't protection. It's possession. They're marking their territory, and you're not a person to them. You're a property to be monitored. Let's get one thing straight. Healthy relationships are built on trust, not tracking. Real love gives you space to breathe, to grow, to be yourself. It doesn't clamp down on your freedom with a vice grip of suspicion. If you find yourself explaining your every move, it's time to pause and reflect. Is this the kind of love you signed up for? 
Do you feel supported or supervised? Remember, being in a relationship doesn't mean you forfeit your right to personal space and privacy. Challenge this control. Start a conversation about trust. And if they can't trust you, then maybe they don't deserve you. Your life isn't a series of check-ins and checkpoints. You're a free individual, not a prisoner under watch. Next up on our list of relationship red flags, don't you trust me? This one's a real piece of work. It sounds like a simple question, but it's often used as a manipulative tool to make you feel guilty for questioning anything suspicious. Here's the scenario. You catch them in a lie. Maybe something small at first. You confront them, and instead of an apology, you get hit with, don't you trust me? Suddenly, you're the one on trial, not them. It's a classic diversion, a sleight of hand to shift the blame from their wrongdoing to your supposed lack of trust. It's not just a question, it's a trap. By questioning your trust, they avoid accountability. It's a way to keep you off balance. If you're always the one feeling guilty for doubting, then you'll stop questioning, stop noticing the red flags waving right in front of you. Trust is essential in any relationship, but it's built on honesty and transparency, not on guilt trips and gaslighting. If someone is genuinely trustworthy, they won't need to weaponize trust against you. They will be open and straightforward, not defensive and manipulative. So, what do you do when faced with this? First, stay firm. Recognize the tactic for what it is, a diversion. Address the issue at hand and don't let them derail the conversation. Second, if this becomes a pattern, it's a serious red flag. Trust isn't just given, it's earned. And if they're not earning it, they shouldn't be demanding it. Keep your eyes open and your mind sharp. Don't let, don't you trust me, become the end of your inquiry. It should be the beginning of a deeper investigation into the health of your relationship now. Brace your Silvis for another covert form of control that masquerades as affection. I can't live without you. It sounds like the ultimate love declaration, doesn't it? But here's the twist. It's not about love. It's about dependency and, quite frankly, emotional blackmail. Here's the breakdown. When someone tells you they can't live without you, it puts an unfair burden on you. Suddenly you're not just their partner. You're their lifeline, their entire reason for being. It sounds romantic in a tragic Shakespearean way, but in real life, it's a recipe for a toxic, suffocating relationship. This isn't about them loving you so much they can't bear the thought of life without you. No, it's about them tying their emotional stability to your presence. It's manipulative because it leaves you afraid to leave or change anything, even if you're unhappy. The stakes, unbearably high. Love should make you feel free, not caged. It should be a partnership, not a dependency. If someone's emotional well-being is entirely dependent on you, that's not just unhealthy. It's potentially dangerous for both of you. If you hear this from your partner, it's crucial to address it. Encourage them to seek help, whether it's therapy or counseling. True love supports each other's independence and well-being, not just survival. You are a partner, not a caretaker of their entire emotional state. And remember, you're allowed to set boundaries. Your responsibility is to be a loving partner, not a savior. You both deserve a relationship where each can stand on their own, but chooses to stand together.